good morning welcome back to the farm i uh, hope your day is going well ours has been pretty good so far pretty steady we got our morning chores done milking's done feeding's done bedding's done the must do jobs we do every day they're kind of all wrapped up so today thought maybe you could follow along on a few things we're doing today we've got kind of a mix of things so one we'll do a little later on is we'll have a conversation in regards to the barn we had a couple of meetings over the weekend are making some edits to what I think is probably our final draft final version of what this barn might actually look like so we've got to go drop those off have a quick peek at another barn that's getting built right now just to get some measurement ideas so we'll do that a little later on first though uh, what we've got to actually do is round up some bales uh, around here around our farm basically we've got two parcels that are separated out uh, we've got this parcel where jess and i and the kids we live here the main dairy barn is here uh, little calves are here that kind of stuff is here and then mom and dad are over at the other parcel not a long ways away but it's a few roads over so it takes a few minutes uh, they've got a lot of animals that don't milk that aren't milking uh, and then they've got a couple of hay storage barns and some space outside to store some more bales so one of the jobs that just happens to come up every week is picking up bales from there getting kind of our supply for what we need on the farm here going to pick that up getting enough bales that'll do us for hopefully a week so that's job number one today one every day for the milk cows uh, so that'll do us for a week we'll need two straw bales that are on the other side over there they'll we'll use them to bed the cows with only we'll two of those we need probably three bales from inside the barn here they'll feed the heifers one bale of hay from this row that'll feed the close-up cows and then one horse hay bale for the neighbor she'll be wanting a bale in the next day or two so we'll bring that home as well too so yeah what's that make us we've got room for 17 bales on a load safely yeah we got lots of room so let's load up
Okay, that does it for that job. Now we'll park the tractor inside here, get it shut off. Uh, it's a good thing that we're going to another barn, a very well ventilated area, not just because of a pandemic, but because we do not have time to shower. We are cutting it very close. We gotta change fast and we gotta get gone. All right, we made it. One minute to spare. What was I worried we were gonna be late for? So here's the drawing. Uh, it is it is different. I know we talked about that five row possibility, but the meetings we had last week, uh, really Mike from Dairy Lane was, was the one that suggested it and said one of the challenges we were running into was it was just getting a little complicated around a couple of areas. So for four extra feet of width, we could actually go right to a six row barn. So it's a much more efficient use of space. Uh, to create stalls. Doing that, we actually can shorten up the barn, so we're not gonna be quite as long. So we're, so the overall footprint is actually going to be fewer square feet than what we were talking about the first of last week. So we, we really like that, and, and a lot of the other things we were talking about are all incorporated in it. So we have kind of this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go slip inside, meet Martin and Joss from Dairy Lane, kind of go over a couple of things, check a couple of measurements here. Uh, <laughs> They're working on finishing this barn up. There's a lot of uh, service trucks here getting things put together. Uh, so we'll slip in, see some measurements, just to kind of finalize this. And then, yeah, I think we're kind of going to get pretty close to sending it to an engineer. Well, this is a pretty exciting place to be, actually. They are working on finalizing everything in this barn because tomorrow's move-in day. I didn't realize they were quite that close to being done here. Um, so we've got a beautiful barn here. This is one, it's bigger than what we'd probably have. There are five robots going in here. Um, we're only gonna have two, although it is just milk cows, whereas we're gonna have heifers in ours too. Um, it's also a cross fit barn, so the unique thing of this is that all the side walls um, are, are basically solid and all the air comes in one end and blows out the other. So it's actually very similar to what our current tie stall barn is, um, but obviously just on a bigger scale. We're, we're not going to close those sides up. We're going to have the air flow through and have fans throughout the barn. But a couple of things that we were kind of keeping an eye on, and let's look down here, is obviously scrapers. Manure scrapers are key because it's gonna be what keeps the floors clean um, as we're working away. And these are cable scrapers, so sometimes you can get either a chain. In this case, it's um, just kind of a steel cable that's got a coating on it. Um, so we were kind of taking a quick look at that. And obviously you've got the boxes over there that that's all what drives it. Um, so that's nice. We were measuring um, a lot of these as well. So you've got in here is the big question that we've got is what's the distance from here, this curb, over to that curb over there? And there's going to be two cows here. So one cow's going to lie here, one cow's going to lie there, and they're going to look at each other when they're lying down. How much space do you need from there to there. These are 16 feet. We had 17 feet in one drawing. I think we're probably going to stick with 16. It seems like quite a bit of room there. Um, it's always hard to say. I don't know which is the best way, but um, I mean, it looks like lots. We'll probably come back and visit a couple more barns just to make sure that's the right space. Um, and so we'll probably just want to see cows actually laying in and pay a little more attention to that. Um, you've also got foot baths, which are kind of a neat thing here. Let me move this gate over here. And you've got a foot bath um, in here. And this is just an area that cows are going to be um, closed off to. They're not going to walk through here all the time, but maybe once a week you run a solution in here, mix it in with water, and then you, you make the cows walk through here. And what it does, it cleans their feet. So it, you know, maybe kills bacteria or does things like that. So uh, this is another thing that we, we really like about having is kind of a nice tidy way um, away from everything. They can't get through here, but then obviously they can flow through. So 
all in all kind of a nice chat with um, Martin and Joss about a few things here. We talked about the drawing, just tidying up a few, where's the water bowl gonna go? Um, you know, maybe add a couple of feet to the end. Little things like that, that I think are going to go a long way in getting um, what we need. And basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna go back and they're gonna tidy up that drawing, just make sure it's, it's um, what we want. And then after that, um, I think they're going to get some pricing for us so we can actually get, we've got a budget ish, but a lot of it's guessing. So we're going to be able to firm that up and get a better idea of what it is. So that's basically where we're at. Um, unfortunately it's getting to be later in the afternoon and just like I kind of rushed here, now it's time to rush out, um, and get back to chores, I think is what the next thing is. Um, yeah, we better go do that. I can't believe that. 10 times a day. I've never done that math. 3,600 times a year driving in and out with that feed cart. Yeah, we could save ourselves a bit of time. Um, next job. One of those bales we brought over from this morning. We are going to throw it in the mixer. Uh, it's just nicer to do it in the daylight. Uh, throw it in the mixer and it'll be all ready for the morning. Why don't I set you here? I was just taking a look at a couple of the videos from this afternoon and <laughs> forgot the fact that I had my Laylee toque on, which I thought, well, I better put my Gia sweater on. It is quite entertaining how um, once you, well, a couple of things. Once when you actually start, you know, having the discussions with different companies about what you're doing, how, you know, a little bit of the swag starts appearing on your doorstep. Uh, don't get me wrong, very nice. That toque, very nice. Sweater, very nice. Don't get me wrong. Um, the other thing that I that I actually do appreciate, and, and this goes to you watching, is 
the fact that I've gotten a lot of you know texts and Twitter messages and Instagram messages and uh, Twitter conversations and lots of different things about the things that we're doing with this project and questions from other farmers about you know why this way or that way or what do I think and actually the discussions are pretty fun to, uh, to be having so thanks very much for the discussions if we haven't had one yet or you have any ideas or thoughts or uh, you know want to have your input by all means uh, whether it's Facebook Instagram Twitter the handles Fresh Air Farmer for all of them. So please do pass those along. Or, of course, you can leave them down in the comments down below. Um, but I said we were in for something very exciting this evening. And maybe exciting is the wrong word. Uh, exciting for me, maybe I oversold it a little bit because maybe you don't find the exact same level of excitement when it comes to, uh, you know, actually doing some things with Excel. Uh, I know, pretty thrilling, but I actually really enjoy working with Excel, and I thought it would be a good point just at the end of this video and at the end of the day and having a lot of conversations about, you know, what we are getting along well doing now, the things we want to improve, what the costs are going to be as some of the prices start to come in, all of those types of things, just how we're going to actually go about doing this. And it comes down to using a lot of these spreadsheets and costs that we use on a regular basis anyway. So what I've been doing is entering in um, the, this was December's um, income and expenses on the farm. So I got them entered into the spreadsheet. And what this does is I enter these every month. Mom does the books um, on a regular basis pays the bills, does all that kind of stuff. Then I pull all those numbers and drop them into my different spreadsheets and my different calculations because what I want to do is a few different things. One, I want to be able to ca track cash flow month to month. So I started doing it on a month to month basis when we had a couple of months that got a little tight um, a number of years ago. And so this kind of helped us to be able to monitor that. And we've just been able to manage it throughout. It's been pretty helpful. And then it just is about trying to keep track each month of in each category what we're spending money on and where it adds it up for the total of the year uh, I keep track based on what that is it keeps a percentage um, for where costs are at compared to the year before and then I obviously have these spreadsheets saved back from the last decade or so so that's how it works and then while we're growing corn soybeans wheat for a um, you know kind of consumption use selling it into the grain market not for the cows uh, I also separate that out so I've got a crop kind of spreadsheet and a dairy spreadsheet so all I have to do is the way I've built it is enter in uh, month to month and then it pulls out a percentage based on what I've kind of figured the percentage should be into either a dairy cost or a crop cost so things like um, our garbage bin half of it goes to dairy half of it goes to crop because it's about 50 50 whereas things like obviously um, you know tractor repairs more goes to the crop side uh, things like dairy equipment obviously 100 percent goes to dairy so that's how it's broken up and then what we want to be able to do for this project to make sure it fits in with our budget we're, we're confident it will because we've run the numbers already but what we want to be able to do with all of these is be able to then do some projections long term so I, I pull all of these dairy costs out and then separate it into fixed or variable so what costs aren't going to change when we build a new barn things like my insurance on my truck uh, my cell phone bill, you know, different expenses like that obviously aren't going to change whether we get a new barn or not. Uh, there are going to be other things that do change. So as we grow, things like the cost of feed is going to continue to grow because that counts more as a per cow cost versus, um, you know, anything else. So we, so we break it down there. And then Basically from there, I add in what payments will be for a mortgage for what this barn will be. Uh, add in a few different numbers in terms of where production has been per cow and project that out for a number of years based on growths in production, historical averages, all that kind of stuff. Um, pricing's the same way, all of it. 
so that I can kind of get a, I'm, I'm pretty confident in my three to five year projections. I haven't actually projected all the way out to 10. I'm, I'm, let's not kid ourselves. Like 10 years is a long time to guess what's going to happen um, in any of this with any costs, with any of it. Um, but that's basically what we're doing. So I'm sorry if I hyped it up as really the most exciting thing, but I actually enjoy sitting here. Um, you know, I, I grab a drink or two and I sit down for an evening and I just kind of type away at numbers and change formulas and do all that kind of stuff. And it's going to be one of the key things that actually helps us and tells us, um, you know, what we're going to be able to do. So, and, and, and certainly I'm, I'm going to be open uh, as much as I can be for, you know, all of these costs that are going to come in just to give you an idea in terms of what this does cost and what it's going to look like for us because I know there are one lots of farmers who are interested in this kind of thing and you know maybe want some numbers to figure out if it's doable for them and then I've had a lot of interest from people that aren't farmers that wonder you know how much does it cost to get cows comfortable and I can tell you it's not going to be cheap but we're going to do our best to make it happen.